welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. I'm really excited about this pen today. I'm filming this at the end of May, but I received this pen as a surprise birthday gift at the end of April. It was part of an ink order I put in to Claudia of Bauer Inks in Toronto. I got my ink, but in addition, she gifted me, among other things, two Pen BBS fountain pens. One, the 309 Piston Filler in Smog, I reviewed last week. And you can see that right here. But this is the piece of resistance. The piece de resistance, you might say. This is the... No, that's not it. Shh, that one's a secret. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> This is the Pen BBS 456 in the Angel finish. I've been writing with this pen for about a month now and I'm still in shock about it. This is an exceedingly rare pen. The Niango finish itself is rare enough, but a 456 in the Niango, I've not even seen a photograph of one of these in the wild. When I thanked Claudia profusely for the outrageously generous gift, I was concerned I took a rare pen away from her. Her reply was, oh, I have another one. Well, now I do too, Claudia. And to all of you watching, come watch me glow about this amazing birthday gift right now. So here's my package from Bauer Inks in Toronto from Claudia. And Claudia's wonderful handwriting there. The Bar Inks logo. Well packaged. Been waiting for this for a while. And there's, oh, come on. Come on, seriously, there's more stuff in here. This looks like a Pen BBS pen. It was recently my birthday, so I'm expecting that this is a birthday gift. I sent a very cool pen. Um, to Bauer Inks that I had excess of and this is a return gift oh my goodness what the well I am just <laughs> I am flabbergasted holy schmeck this is a 456 in Niangao Need I impress upon any of you how rare this is? Oh, wow. <laughs> my heart is beating here. <laughs> oh, my God. So that was me unboxing my ink order at the end of last month and getting this marvelous gift from Claudia. What I'd like to do now is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then do a writing sample. After the writing sample, I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. Pen BBS currently has 18 different models of fountain pens, with the 19th on the way. This is my second 456 vacuum filler. This clear glass version was my second Pen BBS pen. I now own 22 Pen BBS pens in total. Of all these models, it's difficult to pick one as my favorite. I've been collecting Pen BBS for a little over a year now, but still only had one 456. This wasn't because the 456 isn't a favorite. In fact, it's probably because my 456 is a top favorite that I only had one. I've had my eye out for different finishes hoping to catch one in one of my favorite acrylics, like Galaxy, Amber is a Cat, Tootsie is a Cat, or Niangao is a Cat. As I said, they are rare. And then this pen arrives unexpectedly as a gift. Amazing. I should explain the cat finishes for those who aren't deep down the pen BBS rabbit hole. As I understand it, there are just a handful of finishes that Pen BBS's distributor to the Western markets has named after some of her cats. Baini Zhang runs the Etsy storefront for Pen BBS and has some very cute cats in addition to an adorable young daughter. 
Biney takes wonderful, very professional photographs of many things in her environment, including fountain pens, and then posts them on her Instagram. You can check out her Instagram here. It seems Biney named three finishes after three specific cats. They are Amber, Niangao, and Tootsie. I don't have a picture of Tootsie. And just because Ink Inquiring Minds want to know... Inquiring Minds want to know! I want to know! Niangao means rice cake. And Tootsie means rabbit in Chinese. Niangao is also a traditional Chinese cake served at New Year's. Enough of subculture, let's take a look at this pen. Overall, the entire pen is made of the same deep, chatoyant, turned acrylic resin. On the top, we see a tapered acrylic finial, which is screwed securely into the cap and holds a sword clip in place. The clip is very springy and usable, and it is identical to clips found on other Pen BBS models. The cap tapers up to a wide cap band that's embossed with Pen BBS Shanghai and 456. There is a tiny step down to the barrel, which is straight until about here, where it tapers down to a chrome ring and the piston knob. The cap unscrews with one and about a quarter turns to reveal a concave section and a number six two-toned Pen BBS Fine Waverly Bent Nib. It is engraved with Pen BBS since 2005 and an F for Fine China and some scroll work. The nib and feed assembly unscrews from the section, making it dead simple to replace nibs. And you can buy extra nibs from Pen BBS on Etsy for five bucks. And they come in this fantastic little nib charm with uh, different kinds of acrylic. This is summer. And there is a nib. So you just unscrew that, screw that back into the section of the pen, and you've swapped nibs. Just that quick and easy. You're gonna love my nuts. It's so easy, one finger. If I could do it with one finger, you guys could do it with your whole hand. You can also pull the number six nib out of that collar and replace it with other brands like Yovo, Bach, Nemosine, that kind of thing. For example, here is my 309 that I just did a review on, and that is a number six fine Bach nib that I've got in there, and it works beautifully. You can also get all kinds of extra parts in the Pen BBS parts pack. Here's mine. And you can get this from Etsy for $8 US. It has extra nib collars, O-rings, feeds. You see there's a piston rod in there. Some pistons, washers, O-rings, all kinds of things to maintain your pens, eight bucks. The section unscrews from the barrel where there is an o-ring right there to help you seal a lot of other piston fillers and vacuum fillers don't have this feature and you have to uh, work through this end the nib end of the pen to clean it out and so forth uh, because this just doesn't come apart let's look at the filling system on this pen i'm going to use my my clear glass demonstrator so you can see this a little bit easier the blind cap unscrews, which allows the piston rod to retract and draw the piston back. You place the nib down into your ink. Now I'm using just water for this demonstration. And then you push down on the rod and when you push down on the rod, it creates a negative pressure behind that piston. And then when you get to this point in the barrel, 
the inside diameter of the barrel expands. And so I've created a vacuum by pushing this forward. There's a vacuum right in here. As soon as it gets to about here, that vacuum is broken and the air will rush back into this chamber. And there's no more vacuum. But if the nib is in ink, that vacuum will suck up ink through the feed and into the back of the ink chamber. So let's give this a try. So I immerse the nib and the part of the section into the ink and I'm going to push down on the plunger and then the ink flows up into the ink chamber. Not much of a fill. So what you generally do is repeat the process. Draw the piston back again while leaving the raw, the leaving the nib in the ink. Push it down and let it fill up again. Now the second time, because the the nib and feed were already saturated and there was ink in the section, you'll get more ink drawn up into the body of the pen. There's also something else happens with these vacuum fillers. When the blind cap is open, like this, there is a space here between the end of the piston and the end of the section. And that allows the ink to flow into the front of the pen. And if you close that down, that piston now is sealed the back of that section, so no ink is going to flow. So if you continue to write with this pen, none of this ink is going to go into this second part of the pen. And so you'll eventually starve the nib and feed of all that ink. So what you do is you release that, which backs that off and opens the plug basically, and allows the ink to flow. This is a feature of vacuum fillers and also the new improved 355 bulk filler has that same feature. It's like a shutoff valve. What this does is allow you to, when you're closed down, seal off your pen from any air pressure changes. So you can take this pen on a flight, change air pressure in a plane, and the only amount of ink that's in this pen that will change is just in this little bit of the section right here. And so you'll have less leakage, less burping, that kind of thing. It's not just air pressure, but also warmth. If you have this in your pocket and it's warm against your body, that changes the temperature of the oxygen or the air that's in there, and it's gonna change the volume of air. So it may push ink out into your cap. So, that's a nice little feature, that shutoff valve, that comes with the 456. Uh, you should be able to get a pretty good fill. I get about one and a half uh, milliliters of ink in one of these. In fact, let's measure this. And I'm going to suck up all the ink that's in there. That's about one and three quarter milliliters of ink that you would get in that fill. So the cap posts deeply and securely and doesn't back weight that pen. It's still forward weighted but this pen is nicely balanced in the hand both posted and unposted. It's one of the things I like about this pen the most is how well it posts. There's no charge for that rhyme by the way. The cap does add some extra heft to the pen but that's that's good as far as I'm concerned. Um, this is a, a fairly substantial pen in the hand. It isn't heavy, but it feels substantial. And it is actually quite a bit different feeling than the 309. The 309 feels very light in the hand comparatively, but they both post about the same. This is the other thing about Pen BBS that I really like. They have something for everyone. Every model has a different shape or style section. And they have a variety of filling systems and a huge variety of finishes. If you can't find a pen that suits your hand and your style with Pen BBS, you're too picky, my friend. 
Certainly these pens can fit most pocketbooks. The clear version of this pen goes for about $34.99 US. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Okay, here is the Pen BBS 456 with a Lamy Safari, a Visconti Van Gogh, a Conklin Durograph, and a Faber-Castell Loom. Now let's see them posted. So all of these pens post pretty well except for the Durograph, which is ridiculously long when it's posted. But the 456 posts very nicely. The Safari posts very deeply and securely. It is a bit longer than the 456. The Van Gogh posts very, very nicely. The Durograph, as I mentioned, doesn't post well at all. And the Faber-Castell Loom posts really, really nicely. Now let's take a look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back for the writing sample portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Pen BBS 456 in Niangao. It is a fine steel nib and the ink today is Robert Oster copper jelly and here is the test card for that color. I haven't got a lot that closely matches it, but here is Robert Oster Muddy Wine next to it. And they're both sort of, this is almost a, I like to call it a smoky pink, whereas this is more of a brownish Merlot wine color. In my lighting designer days, I would have called this color Roscoe Lux number 50, smoky pink. That would be Lee 127 to you Brits. Let's check the wetness. Now, this is fairly typical. This is not an extremely wet pen. I've done nothing to this nib in the month that I've owned it. After this review, I might floss it a bit uh, to get it a little bit wetter for my liking. But the nib has actually improved uh, and become smoother and wetter the more I've written with it. As to line variation, there is no pressure. There is some pressure, but I don't expect much line variation, and I don't get any line variation, because this is a very, very stiff steel nib. But being a Waverly nib, you'll get some line variation just from vertical strokes and then horizontal strokes. So the horizontal strokes are wider, and the vertical strokes are narrower. Let's listen to it right. It's a very smooth, very, very pleasant writing experience. Typical of Pen BBS fine nibs. I just love these. And for some reverse writing, that's very scratchy and very dry. And some quick writing. Uh, 
that feed has no problem keeping up. Now, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, there's a lot to like about this fountain pen, so grab a seat. Get a drink and a sandwich. I'll wait. You back? Okay, let's go. I like everything about this pen. There. Done. Finito. You want more detail? Okay. I love the nib, of course. It's smooth. It has that mini Fude Waverly upturn that I've come to adore. I love it so much I've replaced nibs in almost all my inked and in-use pens. Yes, this is a personal taste thing. I know some of you love the Pen BBS round medium better. That's fine. I mean, that's medium, broadly speaking, of course. I'm not a one-trick pony, mind you. I can expand my horizons. Here is my Moonman M800 with a Leonardo Momento Zero broad nib in it. Sacrilege! Burn him! Persecute the unbeliever! An unbeliever! Just a little teaser for you all. My Leonardo Officiana Italiana Momento Zero Blue Hawaii should be here in a couple of weeks. But back to what I love about the 456. I love the section. That slight concave hourglass shape with no rim or lip at the end is just perfection for my hand. And you don't feel these threads here at all. I love the way the pen feels in my hand, both posted and unposted, but especially posted. I wish my Pen BBS 500, the 492, and the 355 posted this well. I'm not a stickler for posting because I love the Pen BBS 323 as well. It just doesn't post. It just makes it a more convenient pen sometimes. I love the resin. This Niangao is truly outstanding. It isn't as flashy as some of my other resins, like Galaxy and Amber, but there is beauty and subtlety as well. I love the filling mechanism. It is quick and easy and gives you a lot of ink. It is easy to maintain and clean. The pen comes apart very easily for cleaning and easy to put back together again. Now this part of the filling mechanism back here that comes out of the pen has a little flatted section on it that you can, when you the first time you open this up, a little bit of a wrench pull on that. Um, will open that up. But once I've done it, I can do this w almost with my bare hands. And I put a little bit of rubber around there and give it a little bit of a start. And there with my hands, it's a part. It's that easy. So even those of you that are tool challenged can handle this, I'm sure. And no sending it off to Italy and waiting for two months for its return. Void the warranty, you say? Well, there might be no warranty on this pen, but I know from personal experience that if you buy from the official store on Etsy, Biney will take care of your issues for you. I broke the barrel on this clear glass 456, and Biney sold me a new barrel for $8 US and combined the shipping with another order that I had. So I basically got it for 8 bucks free shipping. That's pretty good customer service, I'd say. The clip is great, the finish is great, the balance is great, the weight is great, the overall finish, fit and finish and polish of this pen is great. That would be great. If the parts wear out, you buy an $8 bag of parts, the case is solid. It's so idiot. So, what do I not like about this pen? The box? Nope, I like the box too. I know what I don't like about this pen. It doesn't come in enough finishes. You hear that long? I'm very disappointed. The 456 is currently only in stock in eight finishes. Where are Tootsie and Amber and Galaxy and Misty Mountains and... Oh crap, never mind. I can't afford all those finishes anyway. And if you had them all, I'd have to buy them. So forget what I said. You could put out a Tootsie in 456 though. I, you know, I'd spend my rebate check on that. <laughs> Next month, though, okay? So there you have it. 
by Pen BBS 456 Niango is a cat. Heartfelt thanks go out to Claudia Astrakiza of Bauer Inks in Toronto for this amazing gift. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.